<laughs> so you got the questions you got to ask me. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. You don't want this. Oh, and you don't want to hear this either. <laughs> <laughs> well, he don't hurt at all. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor, if you're new here. And today we have my dad okay so a lot of y'all have been talking about how y'all wanted to hear um his perspective and wanted to know everything about my pregnancy journey as me being a christian and a pastor's daughter let's get into it just a little backstory um i got pregnant at <laughs> come on i got pregnant at 21 um i am not married and i had a beautiful baby girl Dead. I'm, I'm sorry. I was sleeping. I had a beautiful baby hey, girl, hey, and her name is yeah. Braylon. So, um, this is my dad. His name is Tiff McCarter. Um, a lot of Bishop know, Tiff it, McCarter. Okay, so his name is Tiff McCarter, and a lot of you know that he's a pastor. So, um, people will find it interesting to know what he thinks. Before we get into the questions to for him, I'm going to talk about how I feel, and I really. Just was nervous to tell my parents. That was my main thing. Other than that, I didn't really care what people thought. So that's about it. Question number one: How did you find out that I was pregnant? The Lord told me. <laughs> How did you find out? The Lord told me. <laughs> no, to be honest with you, thank you guys for tuning in. And um, if you have never subscribed, you need to go subscribe to David's. As you probably know now, when you have a child or children. <clears throat> there are certain things you just can tell about them. There's certain things you see different. And the um, reality of it is... Um, in other words, I had gained a lot of weight. You gained <laughs> weight, but I can also tell by the difference in attitude. Mm -hmm. Honestly, for real, there are things you do dream about. And there are things you do uh, see different. And here's the thing. We're going to be totally transparent on here. You know, Trina and I had never even talked about it. Trina's never, my mom, by the way. Um, we, we had never talked about it around. Um, so she didn't tell me. Mm -hmm. And um, some things had just changed. And I kind of have a little inkling of something that was different. But um, I actually just, you know, if you remember, I actually called you. <laughs> I called you and said, um, yeah. I just want to know something. And, and you told me. Mm hmm and you didn't, okay. you didn't lie to So him. he had a dream about it and woke up. That was one thing I did. I had a dream. And he asked my mom and yeah, she, did you have a feeling before? So you kind of just answered that. Um, um I, I, you, I had a feeling, but then, you know, there are things you deny because um, they're just things you don't expect at the moment, at right. the time. Um, things are shocking. Um, so, um, but yet still, um, you just kind of shrug things off and you keep going but yet still y'all did kind of have a feel what was your initial reaction do you really want to know? <laughs> yes oh, they want no, to know no they these, want do they want to these know? are the questions that they asked i did, did a poll really on instagram yes so they really want a to lot know. of people a lot of people wanted to know what was your initial reaction they really want to know how i act let's <laughs> let's be honest thank god for my um, relationship with god to the point where I'm past the point of how people really view me, even though I want to make sure I stay in the light so people can see Jesus in me. Right. But the reality of it is, my response was not pastoral. My response was, um, I called you, you shared it with me, you were with your boyfriend at the time, and I asked to speak to him, and I blanked. Mm -hmm. I blanked. I literally blanked. I said... <laughs> Everything I could say mm -hmm. that I could think of mm -hmm. um, at that time. And um, the thing people must understand was I was not calling as a pastor. Right. I was calling as a father. Um, and um, that's the difference. And uh, a lot of people miss that. Um, I said some very um, ugly words. And and um and if it and and I wouldn't say that I'm sorry for saying them because some some people would say I'm so sorry I said it mm -hmm. no at that moment they were I meant it I mm -hmm. was upset um I was hurt um but it but it was because I was coming to you as a father 
or saying it from a father standpoint, it doesn't mean that I didn't know who you were or or anything, but um that's how that's how I responded. Right. So like honestly, him being a pastor and him being a Christian does not change the fact that he's still human. So what was your biggest concern when you found out I was pregnant? Um, well, my biggest concern was nothing of the sort of, again, what people thought. Um, it, and it wasn't so much I had too much concern because um, the reality was is it was just shock. Right. It was total shock. Um, no, no, no parent um, would ever think that their child is going to get pregnant. Watch this. Even when, even when they get married. Mm. Um, that doesn't mean that you're not expecting grandchildren and all this. It's just that here's the thing too. You're my only girl, my baby girl. And I will, as much as I know you're growing up and you've grown up and things like that, you're always going to be my baby girl, my only girl. It wasn't so much of the concern. It was just the fact that it was just total shock to right. me. It was completely like... Wow. Yeah, it was like wow, my <laughs> my 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 daughter, my girl. Right. How did you treat my boyfriend? Um, very distant. Mm -hmm. Um, very distant. Um, um, that's not of. Um, and even to to this day, there are still ways that um I have to still remind myself that you are a young lady and you you make your own decisions and I don't have to agree with everything. But I was very distant because um there were things I was still angry about. I was angry internal and I was angry um, from the perspective of how things happen because it's still, again, I still feel like I should have been informed and I should have been told because I, and one thing you know, I've always taught you, you know, there are different things that I teach you say, as a man, I think a man should do this or, or as a man, a man should do that. And um, so I treated him very distant um, uh, or what have you. And, um, but you know, you, you mature, you grow, you you learn how to love and continue to love. And I mean, that's the person who I am, period. Doesn't mean that I'm not this, um, this terrible guy, but it means that I, I I have to learn how to continue to grow through the pain of things I don't even agree with. Can you go to hell for having a baby before marriage? Um, Based on the way I understand scripture, um, first of all, um, Based on the way I understand scripture, the Bible says in Romans 10 and 9 that if you um, believe in him, believe in your heart, um, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, with that confession, you shall be saved. Um, um, so I don't think you're going to go to hell because of, here's the thing I always, ex I've always explained to people at church um, is this right here. There's a difference between damnation and consequences. And the difference between damnation and consequences is this right here. When Jesus died, he actually took out the damnation of sin, which means that if you believe on him, you will go to heaven. Right. There's nothing that will disqualify you from heaven other than your belief. But there are consequences of what we do on earth. Right. Um, and that's the difference. So good and bad. Right? Good and bad. Mm -hmm. Um the consequences of having a baby out of wedlock um, um, before you get married is the fact of um, just different consequences. Um, the, 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 um, most, most not living together. Not yeah. living together. You, you, you know, the child experiences different things, but it doesn't mean the child ain't gonna be great. It doesn't mean anything like that. Those are just consequences, which is a consequence of you, whatever you do. If you eat the wrong food all the time, you're gonna gain weight. Mm -hmm. Those are consequences, but it doesn't mean that there's damnation to it. Um, you can drink something and you don't even you don't even um, agree with drinking. You, it's not the fact you've got to go to hell for drinking, but there's a right. consequence on earth for it, which could cause um, some type of disease or something like that. So, right. a hangover, a, a hangover, <laughs> yeah. different things, and it doesn't mean that you want to continue to do it. You want to be able to. To appreciate the grace of who, what God has given us, you. I don't think you're gonna hear. Okay. That's that's totally what I, my belief is and what I understand the scripture to be. Okay. How do you feel about premarital sex? Premarital sex. Um. Of course, I don't agree with. Um. It's biblically the Bible has given um, a order of sex. The Bible gives an order about everything, 
and what the Bible teaches us, of course, do things decent and in order. Um, but here is what we must be able to talk about. Um, and I don't want to get into what my motto is. And, you know, I always say something because <laughs> they couldn't handle that. But um, the truth of the matter is people are having sex. Mm -hmm. And y'all heard me preach this. Um, and I tell people this. Christians are having sex. Mm -hmm. It's not the fact of the order of what God is saying um, or what God has said. But the reality of it is, it's not something I can agree with, but that is just something that is happening and that's something that will continue to happen. I think it needs to have, it needs to be a conversation like we're having now right. so people can understand it's not what's in your best interest, but it's also because all of a sudden I understand something about sex. Sex, when you connect with sexual, when you connect sexually, you, you connect in a way that, um, brings out different personalities. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> when you connect with an individual, um, when you're not married to them, you bring out different personalities and uh, and somebody else can go much deeper than that. But though, that's, the, that's the issue with premarital sex and um, sex outside of a marriage. Well, I know too, um, you, you say, cause like people that are not married and mm -hmm. they have a high desire for sex prior mm -hmm. to marriage, they talk about, well, they ask God, take the desire and take the mm -hmm. taste out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit because well, well, I think that's well. I think that's just again uh, a part of the uh, tradition of what people have been taught. But um, you don't have to ask God to take the desire out because then, when you do get in a relationship and you end up getting married, then you have to come back and do what? Ask, ask God, God to God give you back. the desire back. <laughs> and here's the other thing: whatever God put in you is a part of you. Right. And like I teach again. That God gives you, um, he puts in you your strengths and your weaknesses. Um, David himself had one of the most moral issues that you would ever deal with. And if you look at the Bible and, and read about David, David's moral issues never disqualified him from God. It caused him to have some different consequences on earth that caused his family to be at disarray. God even replaced um, King Saul with David and God replaced David with King. Um, like I said, again, God replaced King Saul with David. David had more moral issues than King Saul, but God could deal with David because God could trust David more than he could treat King Saul because God had informed King Saul that I need you to kill someone and to follow my orders. But King Saul didn't do it. So because King Saul didn't do it, God replaced him with David and David had more moral issues, but God is not so concerned about the moral issue of you. He's more concerned about the trust that he can, the trust that he has in you to continue to carry out the purpose and the will, in your, of, the will of him in your life. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. And that doesn't say go and do anything, but it just says he wants to be able to trust you in, um, right. in your obedience. He wants obedience. you to follow through. Follow through. Mm -hmm. Okay, did you know that I was having sex prior to me getting pregnant? Oh, um, you, you really want me to talk about this? <laughs> Go ahead, because I got something to say about something you said to me. Go ahead. <laughs> Answer the question. You went to college. <laughs> <laughs> he told me to go to the doctor and see if somebody was hitting my gut. Yes, that's what I said. <laughs> go to the doctor, and I'm going to see if anybody is hitting your gut. That's a father. And um, but you were in college, mm -hmm. and again, we as parents, and y'all know I'm talking about this. You can see a difference when your children start having sex. Because sex messes with your personality. It messes with your DNA. It, it, it changes your, your attitude. Um, and um, so, yeah, I knew it. And, and you know the thing about you that you always told me? You said, Dad, I will never not sh tell you straight that I'm doing it. Right. But if you ask me, I will always be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit that's the way you did it, and I and I can appreciate that. And I would always ask, and um, mm -hmm. broke my heart, but um, didn't change the love I had for you. If I had decided to get an abortion, would you have looked at me differently? Well, here's the thing, um, um daughter, I'm not gonna look at you different either way. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I still have my opinion about things because, you know, that's one of the biggest things about the difference between people. They, <coughs> they say I'm pro-life. Um, and I explain this again by biblically. I always want us to get educated biblically to the best of my knowledge. I've been doing this 32 years and I don't know it all. We all are pro-life, mm -hmm. which means that we support life. We don't want to see abortions. We don't want to see um, kids that are aborted. But we also understand that being pro-life, we also are what God says, pro-choice. Right. Because God never mandated anything on anyone. And what he did was gave us choice. He actually said in the Bible yeah, in Deuteronomy that he, he set before you um, choice, set before What's you life you and death. Deuteronomy, um, I think it's 20 and 15. If I'm not sure, Bible scholar. but I'm not, I, <laughs> I, I, to check it out. I'm not sure <laughs> if it's not, if it's not the exact scripture, look in Deuteronomy. Um, I think it's right around there. It says, I set before you an open door. I set before you life and uh, 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 death and uh, life, but I want you to choose life. But he wants us to choose life, which he never mandates us to do it because God never mandated anything on us, but he wants us to choose life, choose you this day whom you will serve. So. Yep. Period. <laughs> okay. Period. Uh-uh. How did having a granddaughter change your life? Oh, my God. Um, my <laughs> grandchildren have changed my life. Um, I think you guys have seen me post more in the last year, than yet, year and a half than I ever have, than I ever have in my life. My grandchildren are my life. I love my grandchildren. My older brother has a mm. 10 month old and a 12 year old. So. Yes, um, Amari and um, Ari. Yeah, I mean, Ari and, 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 and Braylon. And of course, Braylon is, is here every day and you know, and she's right next door to us. Um, but the love, my, my friends, my fellow pastor friends told me this. They were like, man, look, when you have a grandchild, you want, your love for your grandchild is going to be crazy and even crazier for your own children. And I was like, man, quit tripping. But I can honestly say I look forward to seeing my grandchildren on a daily basis. It's like, what, what are my grandchildren doing? I post. Um, Amazon has ripped me off. Mm -hmm. um, um, my, <laughs> my grandchildren call me. My my grandchildren call my me. My baby don't even have a phone. He said she calls him. Yeah, she texts me. She calls me. She speaks to me through the spirit. Mm. Um, all my grandchildren <laughs> do this, and they ask me to buy things on a weekly basis. And so, mm. um, I'm I've been broke down concerning my grandchildren. <clears throat> How did you handle the church folk as a leader? God has blessed us with a phenomenal church. The city has been a church that's been so supportive of our family. Mm -hmm. um, so even though there are people that that talk, they say things, they, 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 they disagree, but the city has been such a remarkable church to where they bless us abundantly. But the way I handled them were, the, um, was, rather, was I was honest with them. Mm -hmm. I'm always transparent with them as much as I need to be. The city knows I've always supported them in their things. And the thing I will not let anybody do is to have me praying for their children and their their mistakes and, and their um, proclivities, but not be able to allow my children to have the same issues that their children have and we not be able to get through it together. Right. That that's just not going to happen. I'm not going to let anyone disrespect my house and disrespect my family, disrespect anything that's connected to me because I don't treat them that kind of way. Right. And um, that's how they that's how they treated me to um, that I'm aware of. And I actually just came out and I wanted to tell them because I didn't want my church family to be able to hear it from everyone else. Mm -hmm. And by me sharing that. Instead of them, and here's the Bible again. Um, the Bible says if anyone even uh, falls or go through something, those that are spiritual restore them back in, weak, in, in meekness. I shared it with them, and they celebrated. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the fact they celebrated the sin, mm -hmm. because and there's a there's one there's a minister of mine 
Um, and I say this, and I hope she can even hear this, and I'll never forget what she said to me. Um, her name is Elder Danielle. She said, Bishop McCarter, I want you to remember that only God can make a baby. Mm -hmm. And the reality of that is, that thing helped me. It helped me grow. It helped me mature. And when she spoke that to me, and I mean, some people may be like, well, I already, you already knew that, Bishop. It was the time, because I always say a storm isn't a storm until it hits your house. Um, so when she said that, that that thing blessed me. It it it, it helped me. It, it it pushed me to only understand that only God can make a baby. Do you think there is a double standard with daughters getting pregnant versus sons impregnating a woman? <laughs> Well, you don't want me to answer that because I think there are double standards to everything. Mm -hmm. Most fathers, I can only speak for this one. Fathers want to be able to, they want to train their sons to be a man. To be a man, you know. <laughs> you know, you got to get your son, right. you know, and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But they also don't want them to have sex because they still want them to do it in the confines of, the confines of what the Bible says and in the order. But as a father, you want to be able to know, um, you know, man, you, you know, hope you, you know, you all right, you, 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 you handle a bit or something, because you want that, you want that manliness of your sons, but your daughters, you don't ever want them to ever have um, sex with anyone. Mm -hmm. it, it is, it is a double standard. Mm -hmm. well, but listen, you all ain't got to agree with it, man. I'm just telling you. Um, that it's a double standard, but it's a double standard about life. It's a double standard about the um, entire universe and how there are different things that are double standards. Um, how do you not overstep boundaries as a grandparent and allowing parents to be parents? Um, grandparents, we do what we want to do. <laughs> <laughs> next, next question. <laughs> okay. Grandparents, we do whatever we choose to do. And there's some grandparents listening to me saying, we do what we want to do. Our job is to give them whatever we want. And our job is to give them all the stuff that they parent, their parents will not give them. And their parents can't say nothing to us because we are grandparents. Next question. Okay, this is the last one. Um, if I can't go to my mom and dad, what should I do? Hmm. Well, I don't know if you shouldn't go to your mom and dad. I'm saying, I think they ask, like, is it like they don't have a good relationship with their mom or dad or their mom and dad might not be very accepting. They might be mm -hmm. just too afraid. Like, I was afraid, but not yeah. too afraid. Like, my dad found out when I was 10 weeks, but I knew at four weeks that I was pregnant. So I was really afraid, but... Mm -hmm. Now that I know what I know, like I should have just gone ahead and told them. So, but yeah, so that's really a question that I should be asking you. How do you, what do you do if you are afraid, or how would you change it if you, the way you did, it? even if you don't have a good relationship, should you still share it with your parents? Should you go ahead and tell them, or should you continue to try to hide it? Well, I would say find a way to communicate that best fits you and that makes you feel the most comfortable. So even if you got to text it while you sit beside them, or even if you got to write them a letter or something, wow. I feel like that will make it more comfortable for you to tell them. And also you can always go talk to a psychologist or someone yes. that, you know, yes. is a positive, has a positive impact and can lead you in, a, in the right direction. And they can share ways with you to help you tell your parents. So I got a question for you. So why didn't you tell them? Other than you fear, you know I'm not gonna, I ain't not gonna. My dad's crazy, y'all. Oh yeah. <laughs> he crazy. But nah, for real though, I, I just, I don't know, I just couldn't do it. It, was, it wasn't just fear, it was more so of disappointing you because I never thought that I would have a child before I got married, ever. It just happened. I mean, that's what happens when you have sex, but it actually happened. And it's a difference than Talking about it possibly happening, happening, and then it actually happening. I just don't think I knew how to tell you that because I knew how disappointed you were when I told you that I, that I was having sex. So to tell you, come back and tell you that I was pregnant, like 
Yeah, that, that was right. And here's the thing. The disappointment is not so much where the love changes. Mm -hmm. The disappointment is never where the love changes. The disappointment is just we as parents are, will always see you as our children. Mm -hmm. And our younger children, even though we understand you're growing up. So the disappointment is not in the angle that we'll never stop loving you. Because my love for you will never cease. Mm -hmm. um, I tell you all the time, I tell you, it's not just you, but it's any parent. Mm -hmm. I, was, I tell my son, you're the king. Mm -hmm. I tell my children, I tell you all the time, you're the queen, you're the mm -hmm. prize. And what I think parents don't, we sometimes mess up in doing, and I don't want to call it just mess up, is not reminding you of who God said you were. Right. Because here's the thing. We all have a tendency of starting telling ourselves of who we think we are mm -hmm. instead of understanding who God said you were. Above the parents, above what anyone else says, you have to constantly remind yourself of who God said you were. Right. God said you were the royal priesthood. God said, you're the apple of my eye. And you have to constantly remind yourself of that because if you don't, you will find yourself falling into a place of depression and different emotions and not realizing this is who God said you were. Right. So I always understand my love for you will never change. You'll right. always be my baby girl. Mm -hmm. My love, the apple of my eye. Facts. So before we end this video, mm -hmm. I want you to um, just quickly break down sins, transgressions, and iniquities because I Ooh. feel like a lot of people mm. need to understand that. And this is definitely, mm. <laughs> this is definitely along the lines. And I feel like a lot of people's traditions have gotten in the way of things and definitely hinder people from living their best life. So. The difference between the three is understanding this right here. Sin is when you just miss the mark. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't intentionally do it. You just you you didn't get you didn't plan on doing it. You just missed it. You was like you you was trying to do what's right, and you just excuse me. It just actually happened, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's sin. But transgressions is something that you choose to intentionally disobey. You choose it. You choose to be like, all right, I, I know what's right, but I'm just going to go against it. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and you know, of course, again, there are consequences to it. Um, and I can really give you scripture on that. Samson knew not to keep dealing with Delilah, but he intentionally, intentionally just um, did it. And um, um, the last one, which was um, iniquity, is a premeditated choice. Mm -hmm. It's like um, truth is, like I broke down at church one Sunday, is when people actually you sat in church and planned on sinning. Now, mm -hmm. again, there are consequences to it. Mm -hmm. There are consequences to sin, iniquities, and transgression. But all of them are forgivable mm -hmm. um, through the grace of God. But but you, all of them are already paid for. Right. They all are paid for, mm -hmm. but they but you still have to fight, face consequences. Mm -hmm. You still got to deal with the consequences of sin, iniquity, and transgressions, which simply means you will go through some pain on this earth. You will face some stuff on this earth that you wouldn't normally have to face if you if you continue to do it. Right. But um, it is still forgivable because the grace of God is greater than any sin. The grace of God is greater than any iniquity. And the grace of God is greater than any transgression. Right. And, and that's what we need to focus on is the grace. But we do need to continue to be better about our sins, our iniquities, and our, and our transgressions. I hope all your questions have been answered. And Me too. <laughs> If y'all got more topics for us to discuss, then let me know. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.